Thank you, Lord, for the day. We, we give God all, uh, dedicate this message all for his glory and praise. And uh, thanks be to God. Beautiful day. The title of our message is a very short and simple message from the Holy Scriptures. And it is, and I needed to be reminded of this, it is seeking the God of Scripture. Mm -hmm. Seeking who? The God of Scripture. And the first text we'll be looking at is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews eleven six. This is one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. Which says... Hebrews eleven six. This is the faith chapter. You know, we're walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Here's the word of God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God, come near to God, he will come near to you, must believe that he is and that he, God, is a rewarder of who? I love this. Promise. Those who seek him, period. Capital. Seek God, period. Notice what the Bible doesn't say. It doesn't say seek a religious denomination. It doesn't say seek a religious system. It doesn't say seek money or materialism or fame or popularity. You want to be, you want to please God? Seek Him, period. Amen. Seek the God of Scripture in His Word and prayer on a daily basis. Now think about it. That's an evidence of the grace of God as somebody's truly been born again by the grace of God. Because if you do, do not truly believe in him, if you do not truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you would not want to seek him. You would not seek him. So the evidence of the grace of God is that you have the inner desire, the inner want to seek the God of Scripture in his word and prayer on a daily basis, like the Berean believers. Amen? That's the evidence of the grace of God that somebody's truly been regenerated, born again by the mercy of God. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go. Uh, also, the God of Scripture is the only real and true God who exists. Not believing that God exists is equivalent to calling him a liar. By the way, uh, to paraphrase, that ain't good. <laughs> He's the God of truth, the God of the amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 17. I love Acts 17. I just reread this this morning. This is where the Apostle Paul is in Athens, Greece. This is his sermon on Mars Hill. And the Apostle Paul just preaches boldly the truth of God's word by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is his sermon on Mars Hill from Acts chapter 17, verses 23 through 28. Again, seeking the God of Scripture. For while I was passing through, Paul said, and examining the objects of your worship... Paul said, I also found an altar with this inscription, which is, to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. He's saying, fellas, I'm going to tell you who he really is. Uh, notice when, and when Jesus said, God is spirit, John 4, 24, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The two key words in that verse are, in truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. God's word is truth. That means everything else is a lie. What does scripture say in Romans 3, 4? Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen? He's the God of truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 24, it says, now he's telling who God, the God of the Bible really is. The God who made the world and all things in it, since he the Lord, he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything. Since he, God himself, gives to all people, that is, he believers and unbelievers, to all people, life and breath and all things. He's the source, he's the first cause. What does the Bible say? For from him and through him and to him are all things. Him be the glory for every man. From Romans eleven thirty six, Verse 26. And he, God, made from one man, that is the one man, Adam, back there in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, the book of Adashi, it says, and he, God, made from one man, that is Adam, every nation of mankind, to live on all the face of the earth, having God having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. Aren't you glad that God not chance is seated on the throne? Mm -hmm. Not luck, not karma, not happenstance, not accident. God not chance is seated on the throne. Amen? Mm -hmm. And he is large and in charge. And as Brother Wayne says, ask yourself one simple question. How big is your God? 
Are you worshiping? Are you delighting in? Are you enjoying the God of Scripture or a false God, a small g, of your own imagination? Amen. Notice, God has determined their appointed times. That simply means that God himself sovereignly controls the rise and fall, fall of nations and empires. Uh, God is responsible for establishing nations as to their racial uh, identity and their specific geographical locations and determining the extent of their conquest. Amen. Amen. You say, what was God the Father's purpose in all this? What was God's purpose in this? Uh, his providence, his purpose. The answer is given to us in verse 27. That they would, here's the answer, that they would seek him, seek God, the God of scripture, the God of truth. If perhaps they, they might grope for him, a better word for grope there is reach for him, to reach out for him and find him, though he, God, is not far from each one of us. For in him, God, we live and move and exist. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Again, that was from Acts chapter 17, verses 23 through 28. So what does God want us to do? Seek him, as revealed in his word from Genesis to Revelation. The Lord's objective for man in revealing himself as the faithful creator, ruler, and controller of the world. Men have no excuse for not knowing about God. Why? Because God has revealed himself in man's conscience and in the physical world that is general revelation, that is his creation order, as taught by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapters 1, 2, and 3. Romans chapter 1, God's the faithful creator, the maker of heaven and earth. Man, mankind is without excuse before God. Number two, God has given all mankind, every human being, a conscience. Uh, Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul explains by the power of the Holy Spirit, minute de detail, the doctrine of total depravity. Whether you're a Jew or you're a Gentile, he explains in minute detail that we are all wretched, no good, hell-deserving sinners. Amen? Amen? That's Romans chapter 3. That's a summation of the first three chapters of Romans. Amen? Amen. Woo! Praise the Lord. So, you want to please God? Simple. Choose to seek Him daily in His Word and prayer. When God speaks to his people through his word, we speak to him in prayer. That's called heaven fellowship with God. Amen? Amen? By faith in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. What did our Lord Jesus say about this? Teach us about seeking uh, the God of Scripture. What did the Lord Jesus teach us about this? He is the Son of the living God, the Christ. This is what he taught us in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. The Lord Jesus teaching in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. The Lord said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Don't you love that? Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Ask, seek, knock. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. That's an awesome promise. Or what, for, or what man is there among you who when his son asks for a loaf will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, like a fish sandwich, <laughs> he, will not, he will not give him a snake, will he? That would be like you, Brother Robbie and Louie and Emma, uh, uh, want a fish sandwich from McDonald's. But I says, oh, let me pull one on him and give you guys a snake instead. <laughs> that wouldn't be too kind, would it? I don't think that I don't think you guys appreciate that too much. Give me a, a snake instead of a fish sandwich from McDonald's. <laughs> Amen? Amen. It says, uh, give him, uh, give him, it says, verse eleven. If you then, now this is humbling. This is sobering. What Christ says here. This he's teaching here again the doctrine of human depravity, the doctrine of total depravity. Jesus said, if you then, being evil, what? I thought everybody was so terrific and hunky-dory and swell. No, Jesus said, if you then, being evil, again, that's the doctrine of total depravity, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give what is good to those who ask him? Amen. Amen. You being evil. That's humbling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So much for self-image psychology, huh? So much for self-esteem. Jesus presupposes the doctrine of human depravity or humanity's radical corruption. How much more, if earthly dads give what their sons need, will not God give to his sons what they ask in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. 
Is that good or what? Praise the Lord. God is good. We give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. But you know the title of our message from God's word today is seeking the God of scripture. And Jesus just promised, he says, seek and you will find. What will you find? And evidence of the grace of God that somebody's truly been born again is that you have the want, the desire, the inner desire to seek the God of Scripture. Not a false God, but the God of Scripture. Amen? In truth. So, seek and you will find what? Find what? You know, little kids say, what are you talking about? You know, seek and you will find, find what? Well, the answer is given to us in God's Word, uh, precisely. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, seek and you will find. When you seek the Lord, what are you going to find? Answer given in the word of the Lord as recorded in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 13 and 14. Who's excited about the answer from the word of the Lord? Amen? Seek and you will find. Find what? Here's the answer. You will, the word of the Lord says, you will seek me, that is the Lord, and find me. When you search for me, how? With all your heart. How, when you seek the Lord with all your heart. He promises you will find him. Notice not with a part of your heart. Seek him with all your heart. Answer. Here's the answer from God's word to God's people. The answer is, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. So when you seek the Lord, what are you going to find? The answer is him. He promises, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Again, that was from Holy Writ, from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 13 and 14. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, it, I know this is not going to sound very theological or very uh, fancy, but it is fun mm -hmm. to seek the God of Scripture, the God of the Amen, to seek Him on a daily basis, every day, daily, like the Brian believers sought the, the Lord daily in the scriptures daily. It is fun. Mm -hmm. And you know you have that inner shalom peace that you know that you know that you know that you're doing exactly what he wants you to be doing. That you are pleasing him. You're honoring the living and true God, the God of the Bible. Let's see what the psalmist says. Uh, King David of Israel, he was a man after God's own heart. You talk about a guy who learned by God's grace to be bold and stout-hearted, to be as bold as a lion was King David of Israel. Listen to what he said. This is uh, quoting King David from Psalm 34, verses 4 and 10. I'll tell you what, I read this Psalm, Psalm 34. It is magnificent. It is awesome. It is fantastic. Psalm 34, verse 4. Psalm, the book of Psalms is right smack in the middle of the, the Bible. Psalm 34, verse 4. The psalmist writes, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. And that is the Lord delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 10. The young lions, the rich, the rich, the young lions, they do, they do lack and suffer hunger. But look at this promise, flip side. But the flip side is, but they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Amen. Do one thing. But they who seek the Lord, one thing shall not be in want of any good thing. Amen? Amen? What does the psalmist say? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If he's your shepherd, I shall not be in want. He meets your needs, right? Mm -hmm. His grace is sufficient for you. Amen? Even uh, verse, uh, verse it, the Lord, I love this promise. Who's gone through some really devastating, maybe hardships in your own personal life? Stuff that maybe has just broken your heart, it's maybe caused you a lot of confusion. It's maybe even crushed your heart. Well, look at this promise again in Psalm 34, verse 18. Scripture says, and this is awesome. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and that is the Lord saves the, who? The Lord saves those who are crushed in spirit. Amen? We're sinners. God have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen? Amen. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who who are crushed in spirit. Praise God. I love that verse because there's probably things that you probably can't even talk about that maybe have happened in your past or in the loved one's past that has just crushed your heart. But you know what? God uses that for his glory. Mm -hmm. God can work that out for the good, for his own, for his chosen people. God can work that out for his glory and praise and for your eternal good in the family of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And Psalm 27. 
Psalm 27, another Psalm of King David. This is a Psalm of fearless trust in God. A Psalm of King David. This is an awesome Psalm too, as well. Psalm 27 verse four says, one thing. Don't you love that? Sounds like the Apostle Paul, doesn't he? Sounds like Paul in his letter of joy in Philippians three. David writes, one thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek. Here's that word seek again, that beautiful, wonderful, powerful word seek. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek or pursue, what is it? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. To do what? One thing. To behold. Do you know what the word behold is? Literally, it means to gaze. It does not mean to glance. There's a huge difference between gazing and glancing. Amen? A massive difference between gazing and glancing. To do what? To behold or to gaze what? The beauty of the Lord. That word beauty in the Hebrew literally means the delightfulness of the Lord. To do what? To behold. To behold, to gaze upon the beauty or the delightfulness of the Lord. And look at this. And to meditate. I love the word meditate. And to meditate or to inquire in his temple. To meditate. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Like King David and Joshua, son of Nun, and the Apostle Paul. And to meditate or to inquire in his temple. One thing. Like the Apostle Paul, Philippians 3, here King David uh, of Israel, man after God's own heart, Psalm 27. And does it also remind you of Mary in Luke chapter 10? Remember, in stark contrast with Martha, Martha was running around like a chicken with her head cut off. <laughs> and Mary did one thing. She did what? She sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said, listening to the word of God himself. Amen. Listening and learning from the word of God himself. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. One thing, well, us humans, because we're so sometimes arrogant and prideful and selfish and conceited, we make things a lot more harder and a lot more confusing than needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. I know I've been guilty in my past. Lord, forgive me. One thing. You want to please the Lord? One thing. Seek him daily in his word and prayer, diligently, earnestly, with all your heart and soul. You will please and honor the Lord. Amen? Amen. Seek him daily. Praise God. Sing. So in conclusion, I know, again, this is a short and simple message from the word of the Lord. In conclusion, the godly mindset that pleases and honors and glorifies God is this. Uh, in conclusion, it's right here. Col this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church, fellow believers in Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And basically, this is the New Testament in a nutshell. This is the summary of the New Testament right here in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. This is an awesome passage. Paul writes to the church in Christ, Since you have been, not if then, since, since then, you have been raised up with Christ. What are we to do, Paul? Keep seeking the things above, that is eternal, not the temporal. Keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. Again, that's a choice. For the believer to make, to focus on eternal, not the temporal. Set your mind, focus your mind on the things above, the heavenly things, not on things that are on earth. Why? For you have died. Why? My little friend back there. For you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. Set your mind. In conclusion, the commentary says, this can also be translated to think, think upon the Lord Jesus Christ, think upon the word of God, or have this inner disposition as a compass points north, the believer's entire disposition should point itself towards the eternal things of heaven. Heavenly thoughts can only come by understanding heavenly realities from scripture. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. amen.